Hi, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Details. The recent announcement that AML KYC compliance company CoinFirm has decided to add Dash to their prior roster of Bitcoin-only compliance services has left many with a lot of questions. For example, what does it look like when a cryptocurrency like Dash, which has a privacy option, is integrated into such a service? To get answers to that question and more, I'm speaking with a Dash project manager who will be providing support to CoinFirm, as well as CoinFirm's co-founder and CEO. Robert, hello, and Pavo, hello. Um, would you please each introduce yourselves and by uh, saying your full name and what it is that you do? Robert, will you please start? Yeah, hi, Amanda. My name is Robert Vinsko and I'm a project manager at Dash, uh, which means I'm dealing with most of the business <clears throat> developments and, and uh, let's say, integrations and, and partnerships. That's why I'm here with, with you and Pavel. And you, Pavel. Hi, I'm Paweł Kuskowski. I'm CEO and co-founder of CoinFirm. So basically the platform for AML and KYC compliance for digital currencies. Excellent. So it is already so, I guess, interesting that I would even have people from two such projects on the same video call today. So one of you or both of you in turn Tell me, how did Dash and CoinFirm even come to be used in the same sentence? Okay, so you want to take this, Robert? Okay, I can, I can start. So uh, basically, Dash aims to be a financial uh, payment system. And uh, in a financial world, payment systems are, or operators of the payment system are obliged to to uh, follow some rules and regulations uh, stated by the by the countries by the uh, regional regulations or like EU regulations and uh, those AML or compliance regulations uh, can be or have to be followed by the by the financial companies and that's why we we see a synergy with uh, coin firm coin firm can basically help dash in making sure that our potential customers follow these regulations and follow the rules and requirements uh, of the of the states of the countries and of of the bigger councils like european union okay so, Pavo, did you decide to integrate Dash on your own? Or, Robert, did you decide to give Pavo a call on your own? Who contacted who? Yeah, I think the, the story is, you know, slightly more complicated, you know. So, we invited Dash uh, to our Warsaw blocks. In, so, basically, we have these meetings every month in, in Warsaw, basically, where we discuss, you know, what's going on new, in cryptocurrencies and what's going new in blockchain and we invited dash because this sounds like really exciting project so we found out that robert is going to come over and robert is pm for the project which is which is great you know so we sit down after this and we said okay this is what we are doing this is how we you know can work together let's see if we can actually do something together and it turns out that there is you know a huge potential for you know, a mutual let's say approach to the market, and be there's great teams on both sides which can work together you know quite nice quite nicely to actually you know really really do it. Okay, and now Pavo, yeah. will you please give me a quick overview of what it is that CoinFirm does? Because in your introduction, you kindly gave the brief the AML KYC compliance. But for those who maybe don't know what that means, what is it exactly that CoinFirm does? Yeah, so one of the problems with digital currencies currently and blockchain-based transactions is that, you know, it's uh, perceived as, uh, you know, connected with uh, money laundering, terrorist financing, and etc. So we found this problem, you know, really interesting, and we start digging. My background is very much, you know, compliance, AML, technical side of this as well, you know, and we said that 
because of the characteristic of digital currencies, blockchain-based transaction, we can actually very much streamline the process of uh, compliance for this particular uh, market. And you've been and doing Bitcoin uh, for how many years now at CoinFirm? At CoinFirm, with CoinFirm, we started this year. You know, so the project oh. kicked off uh, in, uh, I think, March this year. You know, to be exact. Uh huh. But we've been doing this for, you know, a team was, was doing this from different angles, you know, uh, digital currencies from different angles for some years, basically, already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so this is, this is basically what we do. We, we, we streamline the process of compliance, AML, CFT, sanctions for digital currencies. And this is, this is coming really interesting because we actually start to prove for financial sector that it's it's becoming really um you know much more effective in the way that it is currently for the financial market so this is huge struggle for financial market and it can be really quickly resolved for digital currencies the compliance aspect okay so let us move on to what the tools that um you have at coin firm what those might look like in a dash scenario. My experience with CoinFirm thus far has been to see uh, that if I put in a Bitcoin address, for example, or not even an address, I guess like a, a payment ID, um, you have like eight little categories below the transaction. And they say something like related to weapons trade, related to child pornography, related to a mixing service, etc., etc. And then based on whether any of those eight boxes are flagged or not, you then give your client uh, like a risk assessment, like, hey, it's probably okay that you take this or it's probably not. So to walk me through that process with a Dash payment versus a Bitcoin payment. It's gonna look, you know, very much the same. Uh, so we're gonna exactly, you know, we want to do the, si the same result. We're gonna do this slightly differently. So we have around, currently you see this eight, you know, things on the website. We have around 110 different scenarios and we are still developing, you know, on this, what we call scenarios. So we basically analyze all the information which is possible to analyze from different angles and we come with the, you know, really simple and structured information for the end user. So we don't want anyone to do compliance at the end in the, you know, very cumbersome, you know, old style, uh, financial style, style uh, compliance. But we have, you know, 20% of staff which is doing, you know, analysis and etc. We want to do this for them and we want to provide a simple data, simple actionable, actionable information to the end user. So, for example, you're gonna, you know, we if we would make payment in Dash, yes, and you will be recipient and you don't want, you don't want to be exposed to any of this risk, basically, yes, because if your business would be connected with financial, uh, for, with terrorist financing, for example, yes, it would be coming from terrorist uh, activities, you would be potentially exposed to the risk of, you know, this kind of transaction. So we want to remove this risk from you and you want to be receiving this information and saying, okay, this is clear, you know, in line with my risk uh, appetite, that's fine. If your risk appetite is huge, that's fine. Every transaction could be passed through. If your uh, risk, your, it's your decision basically at the end. Yes, it's basically simple, simple as it is. We want to also expand. You know, so this is the the AML CFT, what we call compliance aspect. We also add to the you know history in terms of credit rating, wealth uh, analysis. So this is what we are currently working on with with this as well. So you can show your history from third party provider you know which is which is you know slightly outside uh, of the of the uh, dash uh, let's say environment and we can say okay you amanda have around 2 million of us dollar in assets in uh, in dash and this is this is what we, we what we can say in terms of history so this is our target this is our goals to achieve i see and now, Robert, you were telling me uh, that you were uh, one of the reasons you were attracted to the Coin Firm proposition were were the types of clients that Coin Firm has. Uh, what types of clients are those? Oh, I guess it should be a question to Pavel. What types of clients do they have? 
but I was I was attracted by um, by the offer of coin firm back in Warsaw as uh, um, Pavel stated I was invited to to Warsaw to speak about Dash and explain what Dash features are and then we had a conversation uh, <clears throat> about services offered by Confirm and I quickly realized that there is a an area that could really support our adoption because uh, bas because many many customers not only from banks or strictly financial sector uh, are required to to have AML analysis or compliance as a part of their business. For example, gaming, gambling companies uh, are, are doing this kind of analysis and, and want to be sure that they are not uh, perceived as a money laundering services or any exchange, including Bitcoin exchanges or cryptocurrency exchanges have to have this kind of services. And I quickly realized that cooperation with the company like CoinFirm could give uh, a much easier way to adoption of Dash in these kind of companies. And those are potentially attractive customers. Customers from gambling or, or gaming sector are, are very big customers. And having a combined offer from Dash as a payment service together with an offer of, of CoinFirm offering an AML and KOIC services give us a potentially attractive product or a package to offer to, to the customers from these mm -hmm. sectors. Mm -hmm. And what, what kind uh, of customers uh, do they have? Probably Pavel yeah. could explain. Sure. I think that the example with, with gaming and gambling sector is, is great, you know, because this is, they are heavily regulated yeah, it means that you know they have they have to have the almost you know exactly the same way they need to treat the the this kind of risk as financial institutions. Yes, and they need to have tools basically. And Dash is perfect payment, you know, method basically. You know, so far it was the payment method which was perceived risky, but with Confin basically the risk is really minimized and can be managed. So this is what we what we call this minimize and manage basically. And in this way, basically, they can they can adopt. They are not afraid anymore to actually look. Oh, this is this is really interesting tool, which we can actually get payments from the clients, and we have this AML solution, which is basically really easy to adopt. And this this is our you know the the, the, the simple you know low hanging fruit basically. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have one question that I think probably almost all of the viewers will be thinking is the elephant in the room. But before I get to asking about the elephant in the room, I want to know from you, Pavo, um, how do how does an organization like CoinFirm gather the data which you then use to say, I think this person has this much money. I think this is where it came from. I think this is why it's connected to terrorist financing. I mean, like what what possible sources of information could you be pulling in that would um, cause you to think you know which money belongs to whom? There's a different different aspects to this. Yeah. So one, you know, key key source of information for us is data stored in the uh, blockchain itself. You know, so this is how we how we gather the data, and this is another aspect what you do with the data, basically. You know, how you analyze this. So basically, we imply scenarios. So the behavior which is basically in the um, transactions can tell us a lot about you know the, the 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 user of it. We collect information also from you know we harvest the information from from the internet. We connect the dots basically, and in this way we build the proper information. Also, we work with exchanges, which is, you know, taking the data from us, using our data, and, you know, also provide us with the data, which is, you know, uh, still, you know, the privacy is protected in this way, yes, the anonymity is slightly removed, yes, but we, this is in, the, in this way, we can collect the information and we can analyze it through our scenarios. Uh, expand a bit further on uh, the user behavior. What what sorts of user behaviors cause you to make different sort of conclusions about them? Yeah, so we, we have you know uh, scenarios like trader, uh, gambler, uh, merchant, 
standard using and etc and etc you know also malware you know we, we treat malware basically in the way we we treat user so this is slightly it's slightly different characteristic which is which can be identified with our data so this is this is you know and we're working on the on the profiling in this way um, as well you know but the profiling it's it's a it's a word which is very risky but you know just to just to show uh, how how we actually approach mm -hmm. Okay, so elephant in the room question then is that if uh, Dash's private send function works, uh, no one at CoinFirm or anywhere should be able to know where coins are coming from in a private send transaction. So what what will a CoinFirm analysis show? on a private send transaction? OK. This is a very good question. Um, how would you treat, you know, so from, from your perspective, how would you treat the, 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 the information, the private send? How would you treat the private send? From our perspective, you know, just, just to give you some information, from our perspective, it's, it's information. It's characteristic. So if, if someone wants to use private send, it uses private send. That's, this is your information which we provide to you. We don't we don't treat this as a high risk, or you know low risk, or basically we just say okay this is the number of transactions which are connected with this particular address, which are or basically these are the transactions uh, which are private sent. And you know if someone is is fine with accepting this private send, that's fine. This completely doesn't impact the uh, with Dash it completely doesn't impact the the, the profiling. It's just saying, okay, this is the, the characteristic of the client. And we, hmm. you know, we, we need to work out on the percentage, you know, if we have the client, which is, you know, commer you know merchant, for example, but still the, let's say, you know, some percentage of the, of the payments would be coming from private send. You know, how we treat this risk, basically, we need to see how it is going and, you know, what's the expected, you know, but at the end, you should have information. And on the basis of this information, this is you who is taking the decision. Mm -hmm. So with these types of institutions that follow the AML, KYC sorts of things, um, just for my own knowledge, do any of them transact in like paper cash? Or because I'm just seeing this as like a potential pattern, like if they also transact in paper cash, then perhaps that's how they would view Dash private sent transactions just as a part of their cash part of their business but I'm not sure this is this is the acceptable approach and um, so you know it's always risk management you know so it's not so something you know you manage the risk you you understand try to understand what's the exposure and if the client tells you okay this is you know the the, the majority of my transactions are you know uh, can be visible but we have this percentage which is private send because and we want to keep it that should be fine. You know, this is this is all about you know the, the profile of the client then and etc. You know, this is this is what information is managed. This is exactly the same way um, currently done in the financial market. Yeah. So, so you, ex you you accept checks, you accept cash. Yes, you not always basically are able to identify the source of you know payment. If this payment is actually fine, it, it's in line with the profile of the client financial institution, the gaming institution would, say, would accept this. Yes? But if this is something unusual, not expected, yes, and something which is outside the pattern, financial institutions currently would also reject this. And this is, this is exactly the same you would treat this here. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth to understand that the, the service that CoinFirm offers is nothing like, a, mm, I don't know, they, they are not qualifiers. They don't qualify or disqualify the transaction. It's a, they are just providing an information about the account or transaction for, for, for a merchant or for one customer about the second customer. And it's up to the customer to interpret this information. If the customer has internal rules that are saying that in case of the private customer, 50% of transactions uh, instant send transactions are acceptable, right? If, if the customer has these transactions, but uh, it depends on the customer, not on the coin firm, how the information is interpreted. That makes sense. 
So let's move on to the kind of support um, that I guess you, Robert, will be providing to CoinFirm throughout the integration process. Like, like what kind of support uh, will be required? Mm -hmm. So right now we are in the point when uh, the integration happens on the technical level, which means that uh, CoinFear uploads their blockchain or our Dash blockchain into their system and try to uh, analyze the block or block structure in order to apply their patterns uh, to, to, uh, to, the, to do the analysis. Uh, when this step is finished, work on those pattern, analysis patterns in order to apply them or make them similar to Bitcoin and apply them to, to Dash blockchain and keep blockchain and uh, solution or coin film system synchronized. What is, uh, what is important to say is that the coin firm is, is very flexible to, to work on these patterns and we, we have basically agreed that a uh, case of private send will be a kind of special case for, for us. It will be a, a little bit, probably will be a little bit different than the mixing in, the, in case of Bitcoin, just because private send is a, an integral and let's say standard part of Dash uh, protocol. So it's nothing unusual when user of Dash wallet uses private and right. It's it may be uh, a suspicious activity in case of Bitcoin if anyone is looking for a mixing uh, transaction or, or something like this. But in case of Dash, it's a standard activity. It's a part of the protocol. So it's it, it's good that. Confirm has this understanding and has the, the flexibility to apply a little bit different scenarios to, to Dash blockchain than for, for Bitcoin. But nothing is yet decided. We are in the process of technical integration. We are learning about details of, of our services. So we are teaching Dash services look like, how our block uh, what, what are the segments in, in our blog, how our blog uh, look like and so on and so forth. And they are educating us about their services and how do this analysis pattern look like. And then we, we sit down together and uh, discuss how the details will be uh, connected together in order to, to provide our customers because it's not for us or them, it's for the customers. The service is for the customers and uh, we, we need to decide what kind, of, what kind of service will be provided to our customers. Mm -hmm. So I have two more questions. Uh, first is for you, Pavo, which is, uh, will you give us a brief overview of like how someone becomes a coin firm client? Like, do you take businesses from all over the world? And if so, uh, like, what are the sort of, I guess, fee levels and what, what precise services do people get in return for the various fees? So we, we, we want to be, you know, what we call utility for digital currencies. Yeah. So we want to keep our services relatively cheap. Uh, we want to basically allow help with integration as well. So this is this is how we how we see the you know how is we see this working. Of course, we're going to have the different clients and different segments depends on the you know data feeds which you know they are receiving. You know how how rich is the data? How much information is actually contained in the data? Most of the clients we are seeing as coming from API you know angle. And so basically, this is where we have you know people who are integrating our services into them into very, very work. And, but it's, it's really interesting because we see clients who are, you know, really using this for many different aspects. And they see this, you know, see also very interesting adoptions of their clients. So for, for example, we have one, one client who is working on, on the project, which is basically kind of, you know, allowing use their clients to buy our data through, through them. So this is one of the one of the interesting aspects. We also have very much, you know, very huge uh, angle for financial institutions, traditional financial institutions from the, you know, so if, for example, if we have large clients uh, who will be using Dash and 
this dash is becoming you know the, the, the huge asset for uh, for this for this client financial institutions who is providing the standard bank banking uh, information uh, standard by banking ser services they need to understand this risk as well yeah, so we're going to provide also and we already signed with one of the one of the biggest uh, business intelligence company in the world basically uh, where we actually provide this data to them and they are selling this you know farther to this to the to the banks basically in this way we allow adoption for financial institutions of you know digital currencies payments you know so it's at the moment there's a blind spot for financial institutions they don't know how to handle this risk yes they don't know what's what's going on they don't have this information with us they're going to have this information it's going to be also for financial institutions so we have for example let's say we have uh, exchange which is accepting uh, payments from or you know gambling site which is accepting payments from uh, with dash yes and currently all the financial institutions will be rejecting them you know from from banking services because they don't know what kind of risk they are you know they are seeing and what what kind of risk they are exposed to so in this way with our information they know first they the the, the, the exchange is actually being able to handle this risk and second, they can understand this risk as well, right? So in this way, basically, they will be able to adopt these users. So in this way, when more banking uh, services will be available for a uh, sector, which is, you know, digital currency, we're going to see the growth, basically. We're going to see funds coming from one side to another. And in this way, basically, you know, more, liquid, more liquidity will be coming into Dash. Mm -hmm. So my final yeah maybe maybe just a word of explanation. Pavel was talking about risks, right? Mm -hmm. From the financial company perspective, any transaction is connected to risk, and this risk needs to be assessed and somehow mitigated. That's why he was he was always talking about risks. By the way, we have both of us have a, a compliance background. My last job was was in a bank before Dash was in a bank in compliance department, and that's why we oh, have I didn't also know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have we have more more uh, in common with Pavel. We are both Polish, for example, as you may <laughs> you know figure out from our accent. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, you, you need to understand that for the financial company, every every transaction is is connected to some risk, and they to, they need to mitigate this this risk, and that's why companies like Confirm are are required on the market. Otherwise, uh, companies are need to deal with these risks and assess the, the, those risks and mitigate those risks internally, which is very costly process. Mm -hmm. It's All very, right. It's well, basically very expensive. Very expensive indeed. My final question is: When, uh, just a ballpark time, when can the integration expect uh, be expected to be complete? Well, we did not we did not set strict timelines for this project uh, because we we want to be sure that. Uh, everything is really well set for our customers because it's it's the service of for our customers and it's very important service so there is no space for failure in this but i really hope that this uh, this project will be will be somehow finished by the end of this month and we we could start so we could start with with first starting from november yeah so so from from my angle you know so basically we have three parts here yes one part is you know dash one part is is coin firm and then we have clients you know so we first we matching this at the same time we are looking for you know who is um how clients you know what's the expectation from the client in this particular sector right so you know this is very much influencing our decisions as well so we're gonna do you know we are doing already but we're gonna do this full speed with with robert and with the with dash team uh, you know in this month you know and the, the early next month basically to understand okay guys what do you actually need and how we can uh, provide you this in the, the most efficient way excellent all right well thanks for your time fellas and if no one has any uh additional comments to make i really think that that covers everything i wanted to know 
Yeah, I, ha I have one comment. Don't be scared about AML and, and compliance services. These are not, you know, devils or, or something. These are integral part of, of financial services. And uh, we internally in in the core team and in CoinFirm, we, we really understand that we, we need to comply with, with this part of the industry just because uh, regulators are there and won't change the industry because we are coming. We need to somehow be smart enough to uh, cooperate with them and bring our services there being uh, compliant with, with their requirements. That's why, that's why I find this, this partnership really valuable and I find it a, a promising partnership for faster adoption in, in big financial business for, for Dash. And from my side, Amanda, you know, thank you very much for for the the interview, for this opportunity. And from our angle, it's actually you know the privacy is very important. We understand the value of privacy, so we don't want to you know expand on this in not necessary way. And actually, we want to carve out perfect solution, which is actually not going too much into the privacy aspect. All right, but allowing adoption, yeah. Well, I think this all promises for very interesting times ahead. So I look forward to seeing updates on the integration. And thank you both for your time. Thank, thank you. you very much, Amanda. Bye-bye. Have you ever been to a Dash meetup or a live Dash presentation of sorts? If you haven't, and it's something you'd be interested to try, and you live in the United States, sorry, that's where I live, uh, you may get the opportunity as Pete and I will be headed out on the road next month on a multi-city tour of sorts. And we'll be announcing details about which cities we'll be visiting in the episodes to come. So be sure to stay tuned for that by following us at Dash Detailed on Twitter and subscribing by sending an email to amanda at dash.org with the word subscribe in the subject line. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Living Room of Satoshi is a cryptocurrency bill pay service based in Australia, which is set to integrate Dash soon and remove some other cryptocurrencies. To find out details on the whys, the whens, and the whats, I reached out to Living Room of Satoshi's founder, Daniel, and here he is.